The easiest way to determine the best World Cup nation is to just add up the number of times each nation has won. By this standard, Brazil leads on the men's side with five titles, while the US leads the women with three. But of course, this isn't a level playing field. The pitch is pitched, you might say. Each nation has different financial situations, different levels of national interest in the game, and importantly, very different population sizes to draw their players from. So, which nation is really the best at the World Cup? There have been a number of attempts to measure World Cup performances more evenly. This article from 2013 divided each nation's FIFA ranking score by population to find the answer of Montenegro. Variations on a similar formula used on this website found that the current leader is Argentina, or maybe the Faroe Islands, while this article says that Brazil is the nation that has outperformed its resources the most. Or if you're measuring by media attention or national pride, the leader is probably Iceland, who this year became the smallest nation to ever qualify with a population of just over 330,000 and had over 99% of its television viewers watching the end of its first ever World Cup match. But all these methods either use match results outside the actual World Cup play, or are only focused on recent success, or use a per capita system which heavily favors really small countries, or some combination of the three. So I tried to come up with a system that would walk the line, balancing large and small nations while only using results taken directly from the World Cup. I call it the impressiveness o meter I explain the rationale in more detail in my first Olympics video, but in brief, the formula uses a binomial distribution, which is a probability function you can find on any spreadsheet program. Given a specific number of trials, in this case 20 World Cups, and an expected probability of success, in this case a nation's population divided by world population, it will tell you the odds a given number of successes will occur, from which we can fashion a sort of score for how unlikely and therefore how impressive a nation's performance is. Whether or not you think the math is confusing, the world history surrounding the World Cup certainly is. Over the time the World Cup has existed, countries have shifted, grown, shrunk, split, reunited, and changed names. I had to make some judgment calls for the sake of consistency, from combining the performances of Germany and West Germany while ignoring East Germany, and combining Czechoslovakia with the Czech Republic, to averaging populations over time, to pretending the 1940s didn't happen because there were no World Cups in that decade. In summary, the impressive meter is an imperfect formula using imperfect data. But even so, I believe it's better than the other measuring systems we commonly use. It's our least worst option, if you will, to answer an impossible question. So with that glowing self-endorsement, let's look at the results. When you run the formula for the Men's World Cup results, looking only at titles, Uruguay leads with two wins, an impressive total for a nation whose population has ranged from two to three and a half million people over that time. Italy is second, with four titles and a population ranging from 40 to 60 million, followed by the more traditional powers of Brazil, Germany, and Argentina. But there's more to the World Cup than just winning at all. Winning the cup takes so much luck and timing that a good measure of success will also reward those nations who consistently make it deep into the tournament, whether they win the whole thing or not. So I created a combined score using five cumulative binomial distributions, one for the total number of World Cups won, one for total finals reached, one for all semifinals reached, all quarterfinals reached, and all rounds of 16 reached. In old tournaments with different formats, I used a nation's final ranking in lieu of the rounds it reached. I then doubled the value of each successive round, which is an arbitrary but I think reasonable way to weight the results. When we look at this overall score, the main difference is that Germany jumps to the top, barely nudging out Uruguay under the power of four titles, eight final appearances, and 13 semi-final appearances. Below that, the top rankings stay more or less the same. It's important to note that this graph does not include the 2018 World Cup results, and since Uruguay advanced out of the first round and Germany did not, the top two nations will soon switch positions. Whether they will remain in the top two spots, however, remains to be seen because Brazil could pass both of them by winning it all this year. However, the thing about a chart like this is that it's a one-dimensional summary of events that have taken place over 84 years. So in order to see how World Cup success breaks down over time, here's a rolling score for every nation to ever reach a final, where each dot represents a nation's impressiveness score over a five World Cup span. The first dot representing 1930 to 1954, the second 34 to 58, and so on. 
If we simplify this slightly, we can see that Uruguay, Argentina, and Brazil have all had moments in the sun, while Germany has proven the most consistent, thus their current narrow lead in the overall standings. Italy, Hungary, England, the Netherlands, and France have also all reached the top three at various points. But of course, simply looking at population and performance isn't going to get us anywhere close to a level playing field. There are an impossible number of other variables at play, and while we're never going to be able to account for all of them, one important factor that is easily quantifiable is national wealth as measured by GDP per capita. On this graph, this side is impressiveness, and this side is GDP per capita, so up and to the left is good. The graph is animated over time, with each position again accounting for five World Cups. Here, Germany's success is put into perspective, while the successes of Uruguay, Brazil, Argentina, and recently Spain are put in a better light. On the women's side, when you look at titles only, the US squeaks out a lead over Germany, but there have only been seven Women's World Cups. So for the rest of the women's results, I'm going to cheat a little bit and incorporate the six tournaments women have played in the Olympics, just to increase the sample size. Unlike the Olympic men's tournament, which has age restrictions designed to prevent it from being considered equal to the World Cup, the women's Olympic tournament represents a more comparable level of competition. So looking at World Cup and Olympic titles combined, not much changes, except that Germany falls back a little. This is a very short list because only four nations have ever won a Women's World Cup or Olympic title. When we look at the overall women's score for any nation that has reached a final, Norway jumps to the top, while Sweden, Brazil, and China get on the board. This score might seem hard on China, but when you have nearly a fifth of the world's population, the impressiveness o meter would expect you to dramatically outperform a country with, say, 5% of the world's population, or 1%, or 0.07%. If we put the women's results on a timeline where each dot represents a combined score of five World Cup and Olympic tournaments and simplify, things are again put in a slightly different perspective. Norway was hot out of the gate, but the US, Germany, and Sweden have been more consistent, while Japan has also arrived on the scene recently. Adding the dimension of wealth, we see that Norway's hot start is put into perspective a little bit, and Japan stands out more, while the disparity that nations like Brazil and China are up against becomes more obvious. It's interesting that in the women's game, the greatest success has gone to the wealthier countries, while in the men's game, it's more evenly spread across the financial spectrum. And finally, to sum it all up, here is men's and women's impressiveness combined. Germany blows away the field in this category, as the only nation to have won both a men's and women's World Cup title. In the end, your enjoyment of the World Cup doesn't have to be dependent on the performance of your national team. I have to believe that this year, because I'm an American. Who's really the best World Cup nation? These numbers point to Germany, but these aren't the only numbers, and numbers are never the whole story anyway, so it's up to each of us to decide whether any of this matters outside of a nerdy YouTube video. Besides, in our hearts, we all know the real winner is Iceland.